We've got this new MX-5 Global Cup car in the shop. We've got most of the parts, so let's start repairing this thing. As you can see, we have most of the parts. They all came in. This thing still is on go jacks because the steering rack is KO'd in this car. So what we've got to do is get this car on this frame machine. Being on go jacks is a huge plus for this car because the steering rack is hanging off the car and the steering wheel is not even attached to the steering rack. Now we'll be able to slide this thing over in front of the frame machine and get it lined up. We do have the rack strapped to the cradle just to try to hold the wheel straight so that I can, if I can get it lined up straight with the frame machine, I'll be able to drive it up on the frame machine. We won't have to uh, come along it up because that's, that's no fun. All right, so I got it lined up with the frame machine pretty close, but I'm gonna get my brother out here to make sure I don't drive off the frame machine when I'm driving it up because it does not steer at all. Now, if it, it is starting to go a little bit of crooked, he can grab the wheel, pull the wheel, and kind of, and they should come together because the the, uh, the rack is strapped to their cradle, so it shouldn't be a big deal. All right, so let's get in this thing. All right, now I can hook the steering wheel up. But I don't really know why I need to because it just turns freely. It's not attached to anything. So steering wheel doesn't need a half. So we're going to drive this thing with no steering wheel. Got this thing up on the frame machine here. Got to get it clamped down. But before we clamp it down, we've got to pull off these rocker covers. And the reason we do is because these clamps that we use use a pinch weld. This little spot here clamps onto the pinch weld. And the pinch weld is up under here. It's just right here on the car. And it's the metal part of the car. And it's shrouded by this here. So we'll take this off so we can get the clamps on. Alright, to get these rocker covers off, there's two clips here, which they're actually missing in this car. And there's one clip in the front here. You see it there. Just basically a little push in. Now once you take those out, you can take a rubber mallet and hit this thing right here and it slides it backwards and I'll show you on another rocker. Let me show you. This is a new rocker cover and you can see all these clips here the way they come out they're slotted here. So if you slide this whole thing backwards they all slide out of the slots. The clips stay in the car which you can get those out later but it doesn't destroy the rocker. The same thing with these bottom clips here. The only the only caveat to that is this clip right here. And it still goes the same way, but if I take it out here, you can see it has to come down. It sits up in this little hole here. So when you push it backwards, it wants to tear and break this little tab off. So what I try to do when it, to avoid that is you can take this and pull this loose a little bit here. You can see how it doesn't fit perfectly. You can pull this loose, take a little pick tool. I don't know if you can see that down there, but you can put a little pick tool down there and pop that clip loose from the car. And once you get that loose, knock it all backwards and it comes right off. You see, we got it off. And the way I did it was with just a piece of wood here, I pried against the tire and pushed the rocker. Just pushed the rocker back that way and it slid on those things. And you can, these it stay on the car, but you can, sometimes you can get them with your fingernail. Yeah, just pop it loose. Yeah, see that's still good. Now you can, you pop all of these that stayed in the car back out. And then you can put it back in the rocker, just slides right in there. And then when you're ready to put the rocker back on, just click it back on like a new one. You can also see that it exposes the pinch weld really well by taking that rocker cover off. So now the uh, the clamps for the frame machine have something to get, grab a hold to without any interference from the rocker.
So you can see here, the rail is down a little bit and we've got this tape measure set up. We measure the other side and that's about how far it's down. It looks like it's down more than that, but that's just a rough measurement for now. We're going to grab this frame rail and try to pull it up, eyeball it, get it as close as possible before we start taking measurements. And we're also going to pull the wheels off this thing. And that bolt there, as you can see, it slid. We're probably going to take that bolt loose or just loosen it up. So when we start pulling on the frame rail, the uh, cradle won't be pulling against it. So let's do that. Let's get the wheels off, get the rough pull done. And then we'll climb under this thing with a uh, tram gauge and get everything measured out. So I'm trying to take this bolt loose and everything is bent here and everything's shoved back so a socket will not fit up on it. So what I have to do is take this bolt out, which is basically a cam nut, just slide it that way so I can get a uh, socket up on that bolt there. All right, I'm going underneath so we can start measuring this thing out with a tram gauge. I'm under here. There's, these are pickup points for uh, measurements. We're going to measure from this hole and this hole on both sides all the way to the front where the uh, frame rails are. So let's do that now. All right, so what our measurements told us is, was the front end was swung. It's not square. The front end is pushed this way. So what we're going to do now is take the suspension off, take everything off the bottom of this cradle so we can drop the cradle and uh, get this thing pulled over, make it back square. All right, so we've got this engine supported with this little cradle mount that's got basically holding the engine up once we drop the cradle. Got the cradle all loose. We've got it on a little scissor jack. We're going to lower that scissor jack and hopefully drop this cradle and only the cradle. All right, so we got the front end all fit on the car. We got to fix a dent in the hood here, but all the gaps line up, everything looks good. So we're gonna take it all back apart, get everything ready to paint. This car we are painting. Um, we're gonna get all the suspension bolted back up underneath it so we can get it off the frame machine and get started on the next one. So the customer wants to do the final assembly on the suspension on this car with all the new parts. So in order for us to make this thing a roller, we're gonna bolt up the old suspension.
this is the steering rack we're going to be replacing. You can see here the tab, the mounting tab for both sides are broken off. This piece is actually ripped loose and broken off. So you can see why we're going to be replacing it. Now I did get new inner tie rods and outer tie rod ends for both sides. Now what I'm going to be using off of this is the motor. The motor looks like it's okay so we're going to be putting this motor on the new rack and I need these pieces here. And I, the only way I can get these off is with this little puller here. So we're going to use this puller, get those off, unbolt this motor, and then we can build the other rack. Here's the used parts I'm going to be using, and here's the new parts. We've got new boots, new inner tie rod ends, new outer tie rod ends, and the rack itself. So let's get this thing put together. Looks like I'm also going to be using this little lock nut off of here also. Alright, so we got the new rack all assembled. I left this clamp loose. Um, they're going to want to take this apart and check everything when they get back to the race team. I just want to put this rack together well enough so that we can put it in the car and when we make it a roller we can attach everything and we'll be able to steer it. The best way to teach your kids about taxes is by eating 30% of their ice cream. <laughs> Alright, so that's going to be about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, hit that like button. And if you didn't, you can hit that dislike button. You can also leave a comment letting me know what you liked or disliked about this video, or any of my videos for that matter, and that helps me tremendously in determining what kind of content I want to put out in the future. Make sure you stay tuned for the next video on this MX-5 Cup Car Repair. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. See ya!